Marmite. In the UK, you either love it or hate it. In the USA, we simply don't have it. That's bollocks! Is something we do not say in the USA. In fact, we didn't even know what a bollock was until we came to the UK. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Eric. I'm Grace. With Wandering Ravens. We're a couple of Americans on a multi-month expedition around the UK, and today we are coming at you from our tiny, very crooked apartment here in Leeds. Trust me, I tried to fix this mirror, it won't straighten. Oh no, now they're all gonna notice it. <laughs> Don't look at the mirror. The topic of today's video is differences between the UK and USA. And today's is no measly list because today we are bringing you 101 differences between the UK and USA. So grab yourself a cuppa and some digestives for dunking and let's get started. To get us through this mighty list, we've each got our tea and a pack of rich tea biscuits. Let the festivities begin. In the UK, it's common for kitchens to come with two sinks, one large sink for the wash up bowl and a small sink for rinsing things off. Meanwhile, in the United States, it is rather rare to encounter a kitchen with two sinks. And while we're on the topic, washing up bowls. We've never seen those in America, but every single British home seems to have one. And one more washing up difference, in the United States it's standard practice to rinse off your soapy dishes with running water before setting them in the drying rack. But here in the UK, a fair amount of British people prefer to simply soap off the dish and then set it in the drying rack without any rinsing involved. Question for you, do you or do you not rinse the soap suds off before putting your dishes in the drying rack? If you're a Brit, you say oregano. If you're an American, you say oregano. The phrase fooling around means very different things on each side of the pond. In the UK, fooling around means joking. I'm just joking with you. But in the United States, fooling around with someone implies sexual activity. Along similar lines, in many parts of the UK, to knock someone up means to wake them up. Whereas in the United States, to knock someone up means to impregnate them. So there's not something you want to say to someone. I'll knock you up tomorrow at 8 a.m. You're no, like, mm, no. Haven't I'll had pass. my breakfast yet. <laughs> Too early. In the UK, toilet water is really low, just a small puddle in the back of the toilet. But in the United States, toilet water is akin to a swimming pool. In the UK, there are specific bathroom plugs, which make it very inconvenient to own any hygiene appliances that have that specific plug because you can only use them in the bathroom. When it comes to describing feelings and people, the United States really prefers to use strong adjectives like amazing, awesome, terrible, horrifying. But here in the UK, Brits seem to prefer idioms that turn a regular noun into a dangerous adjective. For example, taking the mick. In the US we might say, oh, I'm just teasing, or I'm just pulling your leg. Although no one really says pulling your leg anymore, I don't think. Speaking of Mickey Bliss, we don't really have an equivalent of Cockney rhyming slang in the United States, which is absolutely radio. Question for you guys, what is your favorite Cockney rhyming slang? Share that with us down in the comments. In the US, you cover your baby's bum with a diaper, whereas in the UK, you use a nappy. If you have a piece of trash, sorry, rubbish, then you're either going to be looking for a garbage can in the United States or a bin in the UK. The longest river in the UK is the River Severn at 220 miles. The longest river in the USA is the Missouri River at 2,341 miles. In the UK, a popular crime solving game is called Cluedo. In the US, this same game is sold under the name Clue. In the UK, it's not uncommon to find the laundry washing machine in the kitchen. In the US, on the other hand, this is something that we have never seen. As for drying machines, in the UK, many homes substitute these for gangly rack things called clothes horses. And speaking of drying machines, in the USA, we call them dryers. In the UK, you guys call them tumble dryers. So all those people that make fun of us for using two words in garbage can can bite me. We've noticed that a lot of British kitchens have two ovens, usually stacked one on top of the other. We haven't seen this in the United States. So a question for you guys, why do you have two ovens? Although a reason for this could be that the kitchens are a lot smaller. In the United States, the ovens are considerably Bigger. larger. Yeah, yeah, they're huge. They're huge ovens. Biscuit dunking is a lot more popular in the UK than it is in the USA. For example, watch our British biscuit video to see just a small sample of the dunking options you have in the UK. I didn't really get the hype before coming to the UK, but now I totally get it. And I'm not able to stop. British snacks and candy are healthier than their American alternatives. Well, as healthy as sweeties can be. This is because a lot of the carcinogenic chemicals that we use in the United States are banned in the UK. 
Keep it up, guys. You're doing good work. Here in Leeds, one of the oldest buildings is Lambert Yard, which was built over 400 years ago. Back in Seattle, on the other hand, the oldest building is Ward House, which was built in 1882. Suffice it to say, there are a lot more old buildings here in the UK than there are in the USA. In the USA, our weird drink is root beer. In the UK, your weird drink is either dandelion and burdock or iron brew. I'd be quite willing to give dandelion and burdock a try. Yeah, we haven't tried it yet, but in one of our future snack reaction videos, we'll probably slip it in. And now let's talk about circumcision. Ooh. In the UK, 8.5% of British men are circumcised. Across the pond, somewhere between 76 and 92% of American men have had their knobs snipped. To cut a long story short. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for this is because the Kellogg's cornflake guy, the guy that invented cornflakes, thought circumcision would help prevent masturbation. And so, uh, yeah. I think we need to boycott Kellogg. And speaking of peni, the British have an expansive vocabulary when it comes to slang phrases for their favorite body part. For example, knob, plonker, balland, and meat and two veg are some of my favorites. Share your favorites with us in the comments. The UK and the USA seem to have different health rules. For example, in the States, butter alternatives made from various types of vegetable oils are generally considered to be unhealthy, and people would prefer to have actual butter, or at least such is the case nowadays. Where Whereas in the UK, butter alternatives are very, very popular. Another one of these health culture differences has to do with soy. In the United States, soy products are considered to be unhealthy, but here in the UK, soy products are extremely popular, and if you're looking for a milk alternative from your favorite coffee shop, you're probably gonna be stuck with only soy. In the USA, behind nearly every great toilet is a great plunger. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, it is pretty big, actually. In contrast to the UK, where we've actually never seen a plunger residing behind a toilet. This is because the piping systems in American toilets are a lot smaller than the ones in the UK, resulting in more clogs. In the UK, tea is more popular than coffee. In the United States, it's exactly the opposite. Despite this, we think that outside of standard black tea, American tea is significantly better than British tea. Controversial, we know, but it is true. I have yet to find a decent Earl Grey or chai tea here. Also, the British infusion tea game is pretty weak. When it comes to things like chamomile, lemon and ginger, and herbal teas, we found that British tea bags are very weak. It tastes a lot like flavored water, and sometimes you have to steep it for minutes, like five, six, even 10 minutes before it acquires something of a strong flavor. Compare this with American tea bags, where you can put in a lemon and ginger tea bag, Two minutes later, you take it out and you have some potent lemon and ginger tea. Now let's talk about offensive words. These vary a bit on each side of the pond. For example, in the United States, Fanny is a perfectly fine name. No one will think twice if you have the name Fanny. Well, it does sound a bit old. And it vintage. does sound really old. The only yeah. Fannies you would meet would be about 100. Yes. <laughs> oh no, that sounds horrible. <laughs> Meanwhile, over here in the UK, Fanny is definitely not something you want on your birth certificate. Also, the name Randy. In the UK, you guys have quite an expansive range of names for the restroom. You guys might call it the loo, the toilet, the WC, the ladies and gents. The lavatory. The lavatory, <laughs> things like that. Whereas in the US, we would just call it the bathroom or the restroom. When an American woman is pregnant, she will often refer to what's inside her womb as the baby. The baby is not feeling well today. The baby is kicking a lot today. Whereas here in the UK, we've heard a lot of British mums refer to their bump as just baby. As in, baby is not feeling well today. Baby did not like what I ate for dinner. In the UK, it is common to drink hot Rabina if you aren't feeling well. In the States, our equivalent would probably be warm lemon water with honey. Or Sprite. Or Sprite. Or chicken soup. Yeah, I guess you do drink chicken soup when you're not feeling well. Both the United States and the UK have a big secondhand shopping culture. But in the US, we call these thrift stores, whereas here in the UK, they're called charity shops. The vast majority of Americans do not use the C word. This is in contrast to the UK, where we feel like the C word makes an appearance often in television or in comedy. For example, within the first couple of minutes of sitting down and watching the first episode of The Crown, C word made an appearance. It wouldn't be British otherwise. Brits call each other mate, whereas Americans call each other man, bro, or dude. It's common to steal bar glasses in the UK. Not so common in the States. Try it, I dare you. 
<laughs> Americans do love stand-up comedy, but here in the UK, it's taken to a whole other level. British comics make a frequent appearance in movies and media and seem to have a much larger celebrity role than they do in the United States. For example, they frequently appear in dramas, TV shows, and panel shows. And speaking of panel shows, most of the hosts and participants in British panel shows are comedians. And Brits seem to watch a lot more panel shows than Americans do. Speaking of quizzes, pub quizzes don't really have an equivalent thing in the United States, which is probably why the average Brit seems to know an astounding amount of trivia. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, only 20% of Americans are able to speak one or more foreign languages. Meanwhile, across the pond, only 38% of Britons are able to do the same. These stats are pretty sad, especially when compared to the Netherlands, where over 90% of the population can speak at least one foreign language. You guessed it, we're about to talk about today's sponsor, Lingoda. Not only has Lingoda been helping us learn French, but it also includes language courses in German, Spanish, and English. So good news for those farmers down in Cornwall, you can finally learn how to speak properly. Why is he jury public call with all the knees and the doctor flip? I'm sure that joke will go down like Marmite in the comment section. But seriously though, this is our first ever sponsored video and we've chosen to partner with Lingoda because it's a product that we use and it's one that we feel proud to represent. Here are three things we love about Lingoda. And number three will tell you how to get language learning for free. Number one, a personal story from Eric. I spent months trying to learn French on my own, but I found it very difficult to do without a curriculum to direct me. Lingoda solved this problem for me by giving me access to an expert designed curriculum, so now I always know exactly where I am in my progress and what I need to study next. Number two, something that I appreciate about Lingoda is that it puts us in front of native French speakers who also speak English. When we were learning French in France, most of our teachers didn't speak English. So it was really difficult to have our questions answered unless we knew how to explain them in French, which is a difficult thing to do. When you're learning French. When you're learning French. <laughs> and number three, the Lingoda Super Sprint is an event that gives you a huge incentive to practice your new language daily. Attend 30 classes per month for three months and get 100% of your tuition back. Now, if taking a class every single day for three months is a little bit too ambitious for you, you can keep your New Year's resolution realistic by signing up for the Sprint instead. The sprint requires you to attend only 15 classes a month instead of 30, and if you do this for three months, you will get 50% of your cash back. Still a bargain. Spaces for both programs are limited, so make sure you sign up by December 28th in order to join Grace and I on January 15th, which is when classes start. When you sign up, use the voucher code and the tracking link in the video description to get $11 off your deposit and to let Lingoda know that we sent you. We'll see you on January 15th. What language are you going to learn? The phrase, leave it with me, when said by an American means, you can trust me, I got this. Whereas when a Brit says it, this is often a sarcastic comment, which means, this will never get done. In general, when it comes to talking, Brits are significantly more understated than Americans. They also put a lot of emphasis on implying what they mean rather than straight out saying it. This sign means different things on either side of the pond. This and this mean the same thing in the USA. Peace. Another variation is to pound twice, kiss your fist, and then see so you go. If you're saying goodbye to someone on the other side of the room and you, they're too far away to say bye, you can just be like, Oh, okay, I have seen that. For yeah. a minute there, I was a little concerned. Oh, and like... it means peace out. Like... But in the UK, that would be offensive, I guess. In the UK, only this means peace, whereas this means the word cheers can mean thanks in the UK. In the United States, we really only say cheers when banging our wine glasses together. In the UK, half eight is said to mean half an hour after eight. But this is kind of confusing to Americans who don't know whether it means half an hour after eight or half an hour before eight. Another time difference, Brits often say things like half past or quarter to without saying the specific hour to which they're referring to. In the United States, we always say these things with the hour attached, half past eight quarter to nine, like this. Now let's talk about British things that we don't have in America. Mm -hmm. For example, blue tits. No, not that kind, this kind. We don't have robins either. At least not the UK version of robins. Or nightingales. Or red squirrels. Unfortunately, because they're adorable. <laughs> if you'd like to see a long list of all the British animals that the United States does not have, make sure you click the link right here or down in the description. In the UK, it's common to hear the words 
stood or sat used in the past tense. Yeah. For example, I was sat there for an hour, or I was stood in the bus line. In the bus line? No, no. that's wrong. <laughs> I was stood in the queue for 20 minutes. In the USA, we would never use these words that way. Instead, we would say, I was standing in the line for 20 minutes, or I was sitting in traffic for an hour. During our time in the UK, we've had the pleasant experience of being accosted with the phrase, you got a problem? on more than one occasion. <laughs> this is a difference because in the United States, if someone wanted to communicate the same sentiment, they'd be much more likely to say, what are you looking at? Instead of, you got a problem. Of course, the classic comeback to, what are you looking at? is, not much. Or, hmm, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Spurtles. Now this is something we've seen in British households as well as in British home goods stores. In the US, we do not have spurtles, although I'm determined to have one in my own home one day. In America, we use measuring cups, whereas here in the UK, most recipes assume that you're going to be weighing things on a scale. In the USA, it is almost always illegal to park your car against the flow of traffic. We know this because we did it once and received a parking ticket. In the UK, however, it seems to be okay to park your car facing in whichever direction you please. In general, home addresses are much shorter in the UK than in the USA. And speaking of addresses, when you mail a letter in the US, you will write the return address on the same side as the destination address. Whereas in the UK, you will write the return address on the opposite side as the destination address. Another mail difference is where you post things. In the UK, it's common to call post boxes pillar boxes because they resemble pillars. In the United States, we call these things mailboxes because they resemble boxes. And pillar boxes are red, while mailboxes are blue. Tragically, genuine haggis is banned in America on account of it containing sheep's lung. And haggis is only one thing on a long list of British foods that are banned in the United States. If you want to learn more about banned British foods, make sure you click the link right here or down in the description to watch our video on that topic. In the UK, you can eat anything on toast. In the US, however, the popular toppings for toast are butter, peanut butter, jam, or Nutella. Not all at once, of course. <laughs> Speaking of bread, not only can you put anything you want on toast, you can also put anything you want in a sandwich. For example, we've heard that chip butties and mashed potato butties are very popular here in the UK. Across the pond, however, I've never heard of anyone putting fries or mashed potatoes in a sandwich. Shrove Tuesday or Pancake Day is celebrated by many in the UK. Across the pond, however, in the US, we do not have this tradition. Although this is definitely a tradition I could get behind. Let's do a pancake day, yeah? More pancakes, Deal? please. Deal. It is a new tradition in the Raven household. <laughs> Burning effigies is a fairly common practice in the UK, especially on bonfire night. Meanwhile, across the pond, burning effigies is considered akin to a hate crime and is very distasteful. Jelly and ice cream, or as we would call it, jello and ice cream, mm -hmm. is a common childhood dessert in the UK. In the US, I've never heard of this combination before. Yorkie bars are banned in the USA because Hershey's produces a candy called York Peppermint Patties, and they were concerned that people might get the names confused. Speaking of banned treats, Toffee Crisps are also banned in the USA on account of the branding looking remarkably similar to Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Now let's talk about the class system. The class systems in the UK and USA are fairly different, especially when it comes to how we talk about them. For example, in the UK, the middle class is always the butt of the joke, derided, and no one wants to admit to being middle class. In the USA, on the other hand, the middle class is kind of idolized, and we all want to be middle class. Another class difference is that it is a lot more difficult to class climb here in the UK. That's because class here has a lot more to do with what school you went to and who your parents are than it is about money. In the US, on the other hand, class is really only about money. So in the United States, you can be working class, but start a successful business and jump to upper class rather quickly. And speaking of working class and upper class, in the US, we don't use those phrases. We just have low income, middle class, and the rich. The rich. 
Now let's talk about how to figure out what class someone is in. Again, in the United States, this is really easy. Just look at their paycheck. How much money do they make? In the UK, your name can betray your social class. Certain names are considered upper class and others working class. But in the United States, anyone can be named anything regardless of class. Another betrayer of what social class you are in is your accent. In the UK, you can often tell which social class someone falls into simply by their accent. Whereas in the States, this is not the case. Anyone from anywhere can have whatever accent and be in whichever class. Another indicator of class is vocabulary. For example, what do you call the smallest room of the house? This can indicate which class you fall into. This doesn't translate over to the United States where people can use whatever words and it's not an indicator of what class they're in. Shopping. In the UK, all the supermarket chains seem to stock the same brands and products as their competitors. For example, because Grace is lactose intolerant, we have to buy lactose-free milk, but we can only find a single brand and every store we go to stocks the same exact brand. There's not multiple options. This applies to cereal, household goods, soap, all sorts of things. Most stores seem to stock the exact same item, just at different price points. This is different from the United States, where there is a wide selection of different brands. The definition of the word quite. Here in the UK, quite is often used to mean fairly. How was the movie? It was quite good. It was fairly good. But across the pond, Americans use the word quite as a synonym for very. So when an American says something was quite good, they mean it was very good. As you can imagine, this can lead to some awkward moments between Brits and Americans. And so to be careful, I've made sure to remove the word quite from my vocabulary completely. In the USA, chocolate is the most popular flavor of ice cream. Whereas in the UK, vanilla is the most popular ice cream flavor. Sudden nudity. Here in the UK, we We've watched a lot of shows and movies where nudity suddenly appears as if it's a normal part of life. In the US, you always know when a show is going to contain nudity because there are lots of indicators that it's going to be that kind of show. TV comedy. In American TV, comedic characters generally have good intentions. Yeah, they may fumble around a bit, but by the end of the episode, everything generally works out okay, everyone's happy, the music is happy, it's bright, it's colorful, and we're having a grand old time. Meanwhile, across the pond, British comedies tend to feature characters that are twisted. They have they have bad intentions usually. They they're not very likable and uh, everything goes to shit. If you're an American watching British TV for the first time, this can come as a big shock, especially when the episode ends and all the characters are worse off than when it started. We're not saying that this is a bad thing. It's just a big difference in the overall tone of each country's TV comedy. That said, we actually prefer British comedy and get way more laughs out of things like Peep Show than we we do out of American shows like Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Military adverts. While in the UK, military adverts tend to focus more on self-improvement and how joining is going to make you a better person, in the US they tend to really sell the idea of combat. Like, you want to be a badass? Join the army. <laughs> I guess. In the UK, many families come together at the end of the week for the big Sunday roast. In the USA, food traditions tend to be family-based, so while a family may have the tradition of having pizza every Friday night or Chinese takeout on Sunday, we don't have an equivalent to the UK's nationwide Sunday roast. Speaking of Sunday roast, we recently attempted to make our very first Sunday roast ever, complete with Yorkshire puddings. If you want to watch us fail at that, make sure you click the link here or in the description. Boxing Day. Nobody in the States seems to celebrate Boxing Day. In fact, until this year, we didn't even know what Boxing Day included. Like, what do you do on Boxing Day? <laughs> That's bollocks, is something we do not say in the USA. In fact, we didn't even know what a bollock was until we came to the UK. I, I'm still not entirely sure. Is it a vegetable? And why do dogs have them? Brits say, do you want a cuppa without specifying tea because it's implied that tea is what you're going to be getting. Americans, on the other hand, would say, do you want a cup of tea or do you want a cup of coffee? They wouldn't assume your drink of choice because it's very mixed in the States and most people take coffee. In both the USA and the UK, the jury is still out when it comes to the article the before a location. For example, in the USA, we would say, I'm going to church without the article the, but we would never say, I'm going to hospital, like the Brits do. Shoots and ladders in the USA is called snakes and ladders in the UK. Either way, the game is rubbish. <laughs>
I hate that game I so much. I hate that game. <laughs> it's so pointless. As a general rule, in the US, you have the right to get angry if you order a cold drink and it comes without ice in it. The opposite is true here in the UK. I think this is likely due to how drinks here don't have unlimited refills. Yeah, so yeah. if somebody gave you ice, it'd be like they're ripping you off yeah. your one drink. You're trying to steal my money? We're like, half of this is ice. What are you thinking? City name pronunciation. There are a lot of cities in the UK and USA with the same names. And this is because immigrants from the UK traveled to the New World and then became parts of cities and named those cities after their old home cities. In many cases, the American city is pronounced differently than the British one. So for example, you guys have Birmingham in the UK, Whereas in the US, we have Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham. Oh, that sounded good. Whiskey, Irish. I, I can't do it. Whiskey, Irish. Wow, you could be a proper Birmingham bloke. This is, this is our Peaky Blinders impressions. I'm gonna throw you in the coat. I'll cut you. I'll cut you from this family. Linda. In the USA, we have a couple dozen ways to say that someone is drunk. For example, buzzed, hammered, groggy, and wasted. But this doesn't even come close to the UK's variety of drunk slang, which numbers in the hundreds. If you want to hear a list of our favorite 100 ways to say drunk in the UK, make sure you click the link here or in the description. In the US, pastry refers to sweet desserts like bear claws, danishes, or cinnamon rolls. In the UK, pastry refers more to a bready substance that can serve many different purposes. You can wrap sausages or many other savory goods in pastry. If you want to get someone's attention with the intent to cause harm, <laughs> here in the UK, you'll yell, oi! Whereas in the US, you'll yell, hey! Marmite. In the UK, you either love it or hate it. In the USA, we simply don't have it. We also don't have pork pies, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you think about eating unsweetened, greasy jelly or as we call it, jello. Another food you will not find in the USA is mushy peas. The first time we were served mushy peas, we were actually shocked because they tasted like mint. Yeah, it's a very interesting combination of flavors. Confusion. Not bad, but interesting. In the UK, words that end in R-E, like center or fiber, are spelled like this. In the United States, they're spelled like this. When it comes to religion, Contemporary, non-denominational, charismatic, evangelical churches are a lot more common and prevalent in the US than they are in the UK. On the other hand, high church denominations are a lot more common here in the UK than they are in the US. There are a few places in the UK where talking with strangers is considered okay. For example, when we were in Northern Ireland, we had a number of perfect strangers engage us in spontaneous conversation on the street. And one gentleman who engaged us in spontaneous conversation in a coffee shop, that last for over 40 minutes. Whew. But in most parts of the UK, talking with strangers in this way is considered rude and a bit intrusive, whether that be on the street, in a coffee shop, or on the tube. In most parts of the USA, on the other hand, engaging strangers in conversation is perfectly acceptable. In the USA, you cut in line. In the UK, you jump the queue. In both countries, doing this will likely result in your death. Oi! <laughs> hey! <laughs> in the UK, we've found that it's not uncommon to hear someone refer to themselves in the plural sense. For example, give us a hug or let's have a look instead of saying, let me have a look. The best selling crisps in the UK are number one, cheese and onion, number two, salt and vinegar, and number three, ready salted. Meanwhile, across the pond in America, the most popular chips are number one, plain salted chips, number two, barbecue, and number three, sour cream and onion. I'm surprised there wasn't sea salt and vinegar. Me too, that, that is my favorite chip. Real quick, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and ring the bell for weekly British culture content. We're going to be exploring the UK for the next few months and you do not want to miss any of those exciting adventures. And a huge thank you to our Chuck virtuosos and pen pals, Andrew, Alan, Edward, and Jamie. We couldn't have made this video without you, and we appreciate you all. And if you would like to become a patron, link to that is down in the description. Patrons gain access to our private Facebook group, an additional three videos every week, and a lot of other fun perks. So make sure you come by. Again, I'm Eric. I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Ha, ha, ha.